What's up guys? Hi, it's Seb. Uh, we're gonna try a new concept, which I'm gonna call the one-shot review, where you're gonna be on my head and you're gonna basically get to experience a car with me. We are gonna start things off with the Porsche Taycan GTS Sport Turismo. We're gonna go around the outside, we're gonna look around the gadgets inside, and then we're gonna go for a drive. So if you wanna skip straight to the drive part, by all means, but I recommend sticking around because there's some really cool gadgets to see on this car and you're going to live it all from my point of view i've just picked this car up so gts what does that mean it means it stands between the 4s and the turbo this is 590 horsepower 560 in the 4s and over 600 in the turbo GTS means you get all sorts of kind of little spec details as well. You know, everything's kind of blacked out, as you can see, piano black all around the car, various different details. What does Sport Turismo mean, that part of the name? Well, Sport Turismo basically means that it is a wagon, and I think that is so cool that they've brought back the kind of sporty wagon. Um, it's just awesome to look at, but sport rather than cross because it all gets a bit confusing there was the cross turismo that was an even kind of higher four by four off-road kind of version of this um so you know it had like some extra little guards and plastic right here it was basically the same body just a little heightened and a little more off-roady uh, on the gts it's the first time they brought in the let's say more traditional looking fast wagon so the sport turismo rather than the cross turismo so there's now three variants basically to the body type that you can have with taycan the coupe the normal the cross turismo available on 4s and turbo and the sport turismo available on this gts there are also other subtle changes well not so subtle this is actually quite a big change the rims the rims, there are two different new kinds of rims you can get on the GTS. I think they look fantastic. They're also housing some slightly larger compared to a 4S brakes, um, steel brakes on, on this one. Um, you've got, you know, a slightly little wider bit here. Again, piano black. You have as standard the sport design front, um, which is just a slightly beefier front end, which you can option on a 4S, I believe, but it's standard here. That's basically what GTS also does, is it gets you, ticks just a lot of really cool option boxes, um, and that also kind of sport design part does have an effect then on um, the rear of the car, where the diffuser is slightly bigger, slightly beefier, like on the turbo. Now, you get a few other little details. What's your... Uh, like the painted wing here that's usually finished in black sorry for the plane and the noise we might well we'll keep it going we said it was a one shot thing it's literally going to be one shot no cutting nothing we're going to be in this together guys so yeah it is um yeah a painted wing on this one it's a really nice color actually this this red is uh, really nice it was the launch color for this car now obviously the main practicality of having a station wagon apart from it looking great i think it looks great um, is being able to have some extra boot space now you press that hidden button right down there or you can control it from the key which looks really cool i don't know if you can tell from there you have the front boot and the rear boot controls and they can get by no problem now you have a much bigger boot really um yeah really convenient really practical it's not the biggest of kind of any um station wagon if you've got a dog too i guess it's not the most convenient this little um uh, part here i remember when we had a, an old dog um yeah you wanted it to be as flat as possible for the dog to be able to jump in but you know these are little things it is still quite coupe kind of slanted um but all electric which is really nice and plenty of space if you've parked i don't know somewhere really low close to uh, to someone in the back and you don't want to open the wagon you can then use the front boot obviously with this being an electric car means that you don't have the engine up front and you have a little storage space here too i mean if you want to divide things up uh, you can do that or if as i say the back is kind of blocked you do have access to the front boot which is a really nice detail what are these if it's electric i hear you say well these hide the um, uh, plug-in charging ports uh, probably should not have parked right next to an airport to do this video but is what it is how do you get to them well really cool you just swipe your hand once you've got your key in the pocket and it kind of hides away in a really classy way and then you have your your charging port 
uh, you then swipe it again. I should actually, that does make me think, I should mention that in the boot, not only do you have that space, but then you also have an added kind of layer under, oh, there we go, under here, which I thought was gonna be a lot bigger than that, and is not really that big at all. Anyways, where you can put, I guess, the charging cables and stuff. But uh, yeah, the seats also then go uh, something flat as well, I'll show you that in a bit. Let's look at the inside of the car, just checking the camera's still rolling, yes it is. Now, GTS means you get a bunch of Alcantara all around. Um, they have some fancy name for it, um, which I can't remember exactly what it is, but anyway, some fancy name, but basically it's Alcantara. You get a lot of leather, you get the red stitching, um, and yeah, a bunch of really cool options. Carbon kind of all around the Taycan GTS. This illuminates at night as well. That is an option, however. So is the Burmeister sound system. So let's just hop in, take the key out of my back pocket. Whoop, it's really nice. Um, no sills around the windows. So yeah, that's a, a nice little design detail. Um, once you're in, it is so, pleasant so nice in here like such a feeling of quality and that is one of the biggest advantages i think that the taycan has over the uh tesla which is i guess it's yeah well, definitely its biggest competition um the tesla just doesn't feel as well put together as this does this has that real porsche and not only porsche but up end um, you know higher class porsche feel where everything you touch is good quality and it also has a really cool selection of um, options because this is a GTS. So there's the obvious ones like the red stitching, the GTS little inlays here, the red seat belts. So a few nice details like this. These seats are actually really comfortable, hold your shoulders in uh, really nicely. Um, Alcantara all around here, you got your two little cup holders, nice little storage space right there. Um, and then more storage actually under here if you want to put keys or whatever it may be. Um, then you are basically welcomed by these four pretty futuristic looking uh, screens. Now, there's a lot going on here. I'm not sure I feel, this one right here, I feel you can really see fingerprints. I literally just drove five minutes and kind of adjusted very briefly the uh, aircon controls uh, here. and already um it just looks all all dirty so i don't know that's just a little pet peeve of mine um so let's start with the dash you've got this curved screen which is quite nice quite immersive um and on here you can have all sorts of different controls so you can have the um sat nav as you can tell in the middle but you can control through that right um little yeah, uh, circle, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, if you want to have your navigation, your sport chrono, so where you can get your lap times and you get this little kind of uh, lap timer clock thing, which is standard in the GTS by an option in the others. You can choose between your driving modes. Um, so sport, normal, sport plus, individual, which is where you set it up how you, how you want it, and range, which obviously will get you the uh, the largest range and then you've just got you know all of these little um displays which will show you ooh, let me put it back in park which will show you um if you know the lift is up if the suspension's in its hardest mode if the traction control's on if your lights are on all sorts of stuff then you come on to let's start with this screen down here then that we were talking about earlier this screen uh you can do all your climate control obviously um and you can also you know open and close the for example the boot so if i press that the boot will open automatically as you can tell and then if i press and hold this again it will then go down so that's kind of convenient you can open the front boot you can open your charging ports you can do all, all that kind of stuff it will then also tell you you know your battery capacity 321 kilometer range uh 87 percent the range is good on these. Uh, we'll get onto that more while we're, while we're driving. Um, and yeah, so a few little things. You can have the option to control what I think is one of the coolest gadgets, but this one doesn't have it, which is this sunroof, which you can tell is already very impressive the way it is now. But this huge sunroof, you have the option of having it, um, I'm not sure what the exact name is, but basically you can control, rather than having 
um, you know, material that will come and block it to stop the sun coming through. On the press of a button, it'll instantly go opaque and not let any sun light through, which is very cool. Some cars have, have had that before, but then you can choose, and I'll put an animation on the screen now, you can choose how much you want it to let the sun through, which areas, etc. And there are various options for that. So yeah, that's a really, really, really cool option. I'd never seen that before on, on another car and it was just, yeah, it's awesome, but unfortunately this one doesn't have it. However, the sunroof not only lets a lot of light in, makes the cabin feel really airy and breathy, but also adds some headroom for the people behind, which will, I'll go back there and, and show you in a bit. You then have the main screen, which is, you know, all of your classic kind of stuff, you, your sat-nav and your, all your menus. Um, you know, you control everything for the car here. So depending on which mode you're in, you can control, you know, um, your chassis, um, stiffness, uh, your ride height, your sport sound, sp sport electric sound on or off. Uh, we'll test that while we're driving. Um, and a bunch of different things like that. So that's kind of your classic screen. They're all very good. The, 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 the sat nav is really good quality. Um, yeah, it has a good, good feedback as well. It's really nice. Then you have this, which is the most useless screen, but arguably also one of the coolest. The fourth screen, which is the passenger display. So whoever sat right here can have access to this. And let's say you know, you're know you driving, whatever, and then navigating or trying to find nice routes around. The passenger can have the sat nav up. So directly, doesn't need to move their eye line at all that way. They can just directly look in front of them because you know that was obviously a ton of work to do um, also if they don't want to you know reach that 10 centimeters further to control the music no problem they can do so through the screen here picking up the phone same thing not a problem at all or just curious about how fast you're going or how many G's you're pulling in your Taycan GTS Sport Turismo they can have that information right there now Let's go out. I'm actually going to a sip of water as well um, because chatting a lot like this makes you quite thirsty. Let's sit in the back. There we go. One shot, one one take video. Ugh. Okay, get in the back of this car. Now, first thing is, you know, I'm not the biggest guy in the world. I imagine if you are really tall, um, the leg room, yeah, it's it's not incredible it's not terrible but it's not incredible it's not you know like a 7 series or even a panamera or something like that but um you know it does the job nicely however the headroom is way better than in the coupe version of the Taycan. Uh, I think it's about nine centimeters more. So that makes a real difference when you're back here. You can um, obviously put these completely, so you can have this down so that you can just have your cup holder if you want to, but you can also put this middle part completely down. So that it's basically flat with the boot. So that's cool and you can do that for, um, you know, just for demonstration's sake. You can do it there with the rear seats as well. So that's a that's a nice touch, very convenient. Um, and then also what's convenient is being able to control your uh, climate control and rear heated seats. Um, two of the two and a half, I'd say rather than three, rear seats can be heated. So that's really nice. And then you do have this possibility of having someone uh, else in the back here, but I mean, yeah, it's a really small seat. I don't know how long you'd want to be there, but you know, it is good for emergency sake. Now, one of the things which is slightly frustrating and you have this in the front as well, is you can't just control where you want the air to come out of these vents. You need to go into the screen and do them through here. Now, yeah, I don't know. When there's loads of sun going on the screen, you can't see it often, or there's loads of stuff going on. It's just so much simpler to do that. I mean, obviously it does the job. It's quite cool, but I don't know. Um, just a little bit too much for me, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's really nice to have that little rear, rear screen. Anyways, let's go for um, let's go for a drive. That's kind of the interior, the gadgets, and now it's time to go for a drive. The sun's even come out for us, so that's brilliant. As long as you've got the key, sorry, the key in your pocket, um, you are good to go. So it's got a very 918 inspired um, gear 
selector here. So obviously you're in park when you press the P and then you go down into drive right there. Now it's got really fancy cameras all around it, this car. And you can even see um, the uh, front splitter, which is kind of cool um, because when you're parking somewhere where the splitter may touch, you can gauge that quite well. So see here, I can see, okay, whoop, there we go, done. Um, yeah, the cameras are really, really fancy on this. And they also, they even, I don't know if you can tell, but they turn with, so look, if I now turn, you see, that camera turns with the steering wheel. Just, I keep trying to go for the windscreen, um, stuff rather than the gear selector okay so this was just a quick, quick little test of the turning radius i guess of the taycan are we gonna make it nope there we go now shall we put it with the sports sound on we'll start in normal mode but i kind of want to try the sports sound and see what it's like so see now how it's completely silent right if i put the sports sound See that weird kind of Tronny James, uh, James Bond, Star Wars-y like sound that it makes? I don't know. I'm not 100% convinced by it. Let's leave it on for now and see if we kind of get sick of it at any point. Um, now, 590 horsepower in this. It's obviously a heavy car, but it'll do 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds, which is 0.2 of a second slower than a turbo, which will do it in three flat. And I believe the 4S is like 3.5 seconds. To be honest, who really cares? It's so fast anyway. Um, you know, it's incredibly fast acceleration. All, all electric cars, um, you know, of this type have that kind of crazy acceleration. Um, so yeah, you're never really going to be disappointed with that with, in any of these. And to be honest, I mean, are you really going to feel the difference in 0.3 faster than a 4S? Probably not, but I guess it's cool if ever you're you know, getting into a competition with someone who's got a 4S. But um, yeah, the acceleration is crazy. We'll try that in a little bit. We are in Switzerland and it's very strict here with the, the rules. And I've got someone behind me right now, but when there's someone uh, when there isn't anyone behind me, we'll whack it in Sport Plus and really give you a feel for um, for the acceleration. Now, in normal, the throttle pedal is, you know, um, it's quite slow, quite squidgy, um, and doesn't kind of react instantly. But you'll see later if we go into Sport Plus just how much more reactive the car feels. And that just brings me on to the overall driving experience, which I think is the strongest point of this car is how it feels when you're driving it. So I was lucky enough to actually go on a road trip in a Taycan uh, Turbo S Coupe, um, about 1800 kilometers all around uh, Switzerland. And it was unbelievable to see just how nice that car was in all scenarios, whether it was on uh, the motorway where it was incredibly silent, whether it was on little country roads where all of a sudden the lack of body roll, the steering feel, the feedback you get from the brake pedal, the feedback you get from the throttle. It was just a really nice car to drive. I've also been lucky enough um, to drive a Tesla and you don't get that from the Tesla. So, you know, obviously the argument is, but a Tesla's you know, faster from 0 to 60 or, or whatever it may be. Yes, that's true. There are many advantages to the Tesla, but an argument in favor of the uh, Taycan would be the driving feel, the driving experience. This is a Porsche, you know, it's not, it doesn't feel um, like just some random car with a Porsche logo on it. It has the Porsche DNA, it has the Porsche, um, you know, driving habits, which are really nice. And uh, it feels like a real Porsche. And that's a real achievement, I think, for them to have kept that with an electric car. And I mean, a wagon is like as far as you could get really from the Porsche DNA in terms of a platform, yet it some, somehow still feels very Porsche-like. So I think that's a real achievement. And um, uh, definitely, what, the, what is this person doing? Anyway, um, a real, um, yeah, plus point for the Taycan. 
the build quality obviously being another that we um, mentioned earlier and those things combined make this car feel as much as you could ever feel like a car could justify the kind of price tag these things are asking just like 150,000 euros plus um, especially with options and Porsche do love their options don't they but as much as you could ever justify a car being worth that this much the build quality and the way it drives definitely does a really good job of that. So um, yeah, no, I think it's a it's a really Im impressive car when you're on it, which we obviously can't do on these roads right now, but it's a very pleasant experience. So look, if you take that sport sound thing off, all of a sudden it's like so quiet, so relaxing. You know you've got all this power if you want it. But the car, you know, it doesn't, feel like it's constantly wanting to go. Um, at night, it all lights up with all these uh, screens. Um, you've got plenty of space, you know, you can have two and a half friends in the back, um, plenty of stuff in the boot. And it doesn't feel too big, too heavy. It does a really good job at, at kind of disguising its uh, its body a little a little bit and its weight. So you know from that instant acceleration, the fact that it's got these huge disc brakes disc brakes that we saw earlier, which are you know as I mentioned bigger than on a 4S, um, it really disguises itself nicely. It's got a really good turning radius and all these things which do do make it pleasant. Now, obviously everything's not going to be perfect uh, in Europe at least the main issue you, you can run into with one of these is the um, charging infrastructure. So Tesla was so good at getting on it early and um, really developing a charging infrastructure which was super easy to use, really reliable. The infrastructures you need for, for this aren't quite as uh, frequent and aren't quite as developed. So that is a problem if you are going to be doing kind of really long trips or what it may be, you can run into that being an issue. The range is really good, you know, um, if you go here to home, battery, you know, you can see 337 kilometers. I mean, you can basically, if you're just using it for a little commute, charge it once a week, twice a week, and you're good to go. So it depends really what you're using the car for. I mean, electric cars aren't, for everybody, I think, but in certain scenarios, they, they can make a lot of sense. Now we're actually going to turn around right here, put it into Sport Plus, and then here we're gonna be able to do a little, except, oh, actually, let's go around the roundabout one more time, because or else I'm gonna have someone behind me again. Da -da -da -da. Sorry, everybody, round the roundabout, okay. Now, Sport Plus, instantly, I don't know if, yeah, it's, it will be impossible to get this off on camera, but instantly the car just kind of wakes up. Now the speed limit's 80 here, so we can have a little, little go. Oh! <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that is the advantage of these electric cars. I mean, again, impossible to really show this on camera, but I mean, like, look at this. Poor! And I'm not flat there. Jeez. That noise, I don't know how you feel about it. Comment below, but it is is—it is a, a little bit odd. Um, yeah, <laughs> the acceleration is nuts. And when you're in Sport Plus like this, the steering gets a little heavier. You can tell, I mean, there's not much body roll. And, and just it just feels like ready to go. As soon as you flex your big toe, the car is just, yeah, instantly wants to have a go. Um, but yeah, anyways, one of the disadvantages, as I said, is the charging infrastructure. The second, arguably, could be the um, kind of autopilot, auto drive options on this compared to um, Tesla. Tesla's really developed, and I think it's such a strong point for Tesla. Whereas in this, it's really good. You know, you can it'll do the lane assist and keep you in your lane, and it will follow the car in front and the um, you know brake and accelerate and do all that stuff. But it it won't, you know, literally self-drive itself like a Tesla will, depending on which country you're in and what the laws are there. But um, yeah, so that's one one other point where I, I think it is a little bit behind, you know, it won't change lanes and things like that. So there are a few points that I think, you know, could be worked on, but 
in general, being able to um, yeah, have that Porsche feel in an electric car and yeah, I'm not sure if character is the right word because it's not really the car with the most character but it definitely adds something, an extra little pizzazz <laughs> than a Tesla like that one right there uh, would have. It's a really, 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 really good car, good product. Um, you know, there's always also in the back of your mind with these, how quickly is the technology going to evolve? So how quickly is the technology in this going to be outdated? But right now, at least, I mean, it is so impressive. Um, and I think it looks great as well. I think it's a great looking car. There is that brand uh, strength of it being a Porsche, the infrastructure behind that, the dealerships, the warranties, all of that, which I think do also, you know, play a role. And it's starting to rain. Um, we're actually just going to pull in right here to end the video. We on this little track. There we go. There we go. Now switch it off. You long press on the off button. And then, awesome. Ugh. Okay, let's hop out of here. Oh, we've got someone farming right there. Anyway. That was my first ever one shot review. Little bit of noise, didn't maybe pick the best spot for this. Actually, let's get back in the car or else you're not really gonna be able to hear me. But that was my first one shot review. If you wanna see more POV style um, videos, I did one uh, in a McLaren and in my Porsche. The links will be up here somewhere in one of the corners. Let me know what you thought of this, if you enjoyed it. Um, I know it's obviously gonna be a long format, but. I've, what I've always really enjoyed is sharing my passion in the most kind of natural way um, with you guys. And I mean, there's no better way to do that than literally basically no editing, no cutting, one shot. You see it through my eyes and you experience the cars with me. So let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you aren't already. Leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And I'll see you very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.